Uh, Dr. Stephen Shuffler's here from, uh, and I, I'll say this right now, this SCOE place over there, what is it, on Bahamas? Bahamas Drive. This may have been true 15, 20 years ago. I don't know. Every, everybody always says when you get like it, you need an orthopedist, if you have a knee or a shoulder or whatever injury, that you got to go to L.A. or whatever. That place is the mo- I guarantee you that's not true now. That is the most state-of-the-art orthopedic facility that, if that place was in Santa Barbara, it wouldn't be any more impressive than it is. And we got it right here in Bakersfield. It's an amazing place. And full of great doctors, and they're all really snappy dressers. Uh, Dr. Uh, Shamblin is, is a snappy dresser. Uh, uh, Hamilton, uh, he, he, all of you guys. I don't know if like you guys hire like Armani comes by and <laughs> just whatever, but it uh, seems to be working. So uh, congrats. It's a great facility over there. Thank you, Scott. A lot of people work hard to make that. So you need to get close to that microphone so nobody yells at me. And we're going to talk about next today. That's right. Is that something you, we see a lot of, a lot of in, like repetitive stress injuries and stuff? I'm an orthopedic spine specialist, so I will see neck patients in my office every day. It's very common. There's probably about a million people in the country affected by cervical spine problems. You've got Rice Krispie neck, yeah. which is a fairly common thing. You've heard that term, but yeah, he wasn't even blown away when I said that. Yeah. We've seen construction neck. We've seen... Motor vehicle neck. There's all kinds of problems like that. Now, the motor vehicle part, that's a real thing. Everybody, when you see those lawsuit collars on people, you always wonder what's up. But uh, if you get smacked just so in your head, because what, what is a human head weigh? As much as a bowling ball. Yeah. And it's sitting on top of a, ba- a pretty intricate little apparatus your neck is. Correct. And, and if you shove everything except the head forward at a rapid rate of speed, you can cause some damage in there pretty easily. What does that do? When, when you get whiplash, what is that exactly? Whiplash is kind of ill-defined. The whiplash injuries are usually just ligamentous and muscular injuries. Most of those get better in about six weeks. The things that I treat more aggressively are people that have herniated discs in their neck or arthritic discs in their neck. Some of those people have numbness that radiates down their arms, into their fingertips, into their shoulder blades, and that package of conditions is what I see mostly. Wow. And, and what, I mean, it just, it seems like so, I've never really had an, I've had, just racing cars and motorcycles and stuff. I've had minor neck problems, but three or four days, they tend to go away. What, if, how long, but with something like that goes on, what, for a couple of weeks or something, it's time to go see you guys? About 80% of people that have these kind of problems will get better on their own. Sometimes it takes a couple of weeks, sometimes it takes a year. But, uh, but the people that I treat with surgery are those who aren't getting better or those who have nerve deficits, people who have actually herniated a disc in their neck. It's pressing on the nerve. The nerve causes weakness in the arm, numbness in the arm, or severe pain. Now, because your spinal, uh, co- a lot, there's a lot of information. For, uh, everything from your brain that connects to the rest of your body, duh, runs through your neck. That, I mean, that's a pretty serious, uh, th- I mean, you can have a lot of problems with a, with a neck injury. The commonest ones we see are the arthritic necks people who, like yourself, lived a life of bouncing around your bowling ball on top of your cervical spine mm-hmm. there. Uh, it wears and tears on the discs, and you get arthritic discs in the neck. Most of those people don't need surgery, but some of them do, and some people get acute disc herniations in their neck, such as a, a bad car accident. A common mechanism in the military is people who have hard landings on an aircraft carrier deck with a helmet on their head, they'll pop the disc in their neck and have a bad herniated disc in their neck. How do you fix that? Well, that's a very interesting thing. Historically, we've done an operation called an anterior cervical discectomy, which is done through the front of the neck. You make an incision above the collarbone, approach the spine from the front, and take out the disc from the front of the spine. You just, like, move the, like, the trachea and stuff out of the way and work from the front. Oh! You just turn somebody into a Pez dispenser. You did the whole thing, and you That's get a big in bowl full of yuck, man. I don't want that. I don't. Yeah. I'm not with that. I'm gonna be real careful from now on, Doc. I don't want to have to do that. You'd be surprised. It's a very uh, well tolerated, bloodless little uh, operation. bloodless. Yes. Okay, I've seen enough movies. I saw Sweeney Todd, dude. When you <laughs> chop somebody's neck open, a lot of blood comes out. I see game. I watched Game of Thrones. Now, if you put your finger on your windpipe All right. and push it off to the side a little bit yeah. and push straight back, yeah. that hard thing there yeah. is your spine. Serious? Yeah. It's right there? Yeah, it's right there. Wow. I just learned something scientific so right the, there. So the approach is very simple, quite uh, anatomically easy to do, and most people tolerate it real well. Yeah, I think what it is is we all picture, we all think of that as being in the back and there's all this stuff in the front, but it's, it's, that's mostly spine right there. Right. 
How common a thing is that? Quite common, and uh, we see it all the time. And uh, the historical treatment of this was to take the disc out and then fuse the vertebrae together. You have a spinal fusion in the neck. And that was done by putting in some bone either from the pelvis or from bone donors in the bone bank. And then you'd put a plate on the vertebrae to hold it together and fuse it. But this is a good time to be a spine surgeon. We now have artificial discs to put in, and I'm very excited about that. Artificial. Well, that you know what? That makes sense because you could synthesize whatever is in a human body now and make a better one. It's a, it's a metal and plastic disc, you see. It's sort of like... Is that an actual one, or is yes. that just like a mock-up? Well, there's a, there's a model of one, but it's yeah. the real thing. And uh, what you see, instead of doing a fusion now, we put this little... Uh, little uh, sort of like a miniature Oreo into the, between the vertebrae, and where the cookies would be in the Oreo is a metal plate, and where the cream filling stuff in the Oreo would be is a little ball and socket I appreciate joint. you're putting this in cookie form. I re it really helps me to understand got that. got my attention. Yeah. At some point, Hop's going to try to eat this, and we're going to No, I was to... just thinking you drop those into a, a vat of boiling water, and you make some soup. No. What? Now, the, the way this... Oh, oh, wait a minute. How many of these are stacked up? Well, you got seven cervical vertebrae. Okay, but this is a, like a this is a model of what two of them? Correct. Yeah, and where that where that uh, device is is there is where the artificial disc goes, where the disc used to be. We take the disc out and decompress the nerves in the spine, and then put that device in. And uh, it has really changed cervical spine surgery because you don't have to have a fused vertebra in your neck anymore. Right. Now, wow. Here well, so that potentially could end up in a human body? I mean, that, that right, what he's got right there? It's a demo version, but that's it's a demo correct. Version, yes. but it's an excellent magnet, mm -hmm, I'll say mm -hmm. that. How long, uh, how long ago was this non let, Let's face it, uh, 20, 30 years ago, if you had a debilitating neck injury, well, sucks for you, you just kind of wrote it out. And I, you know. But now you can, we can fix stuff now that was unheard of 10 years ago. This is very uh, innovative surgery. It uh, allows you to make a small incision. The whole incision is about two finger breadths across. Uh, you can put that artificial disc in, and the patient goes home the same day. Now, okay, hold on. I don't. I don't believe you. That could that wait a minute. Could that be true? Seriously, uh, out, you're, outpatient, the outpatient yeah. spine surgery. Yeah, that's correct. I figured if you go, if you're mucking around with something like this, you're flat on your back for six to eight months. But you, you that you just fix it and you're done. The old way, you'd had to wear a collar for several weeks, two months, something like that. But with the new artificial disc, you wear a soft collar for a couple weeks, and off you go. But those things that we all had nightmares about as kids with the big thing with the scaffolding and the things all, that you don't really do that anymore. The halos are yeah. kind of a thing of the past. There's still occasions when you use them, but it's a rare occasion. Still, man, modern tech. I'm so glad to be living in the era I live in where we have all this modern technology to do this stuff. That is just extremely uh, impressive. I tell you what, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll look at, uh, we'll show people the X-rays. And it, when you see what is possible in the world now, it really is. It's very. Uh, it, people can recover very quickly from things that would have been would have you'd have been debilitated for life not that long ago. We are living in amazing times. Thanks, science. Uh, we'll be right back. I was point at the monitor when I thank science because I because it's science. <laughs> looking at me. See, look at it. You can see it over there, can't you? It's science. We'll be right back. It's First Look with Scott Cox. It's Bakersfield.com and News Talk 1180. K-E-R-N. That is a... I, I, this stuff just amazes me. I could go down to the SCOE play and just look at stuff for hours and hours. I got the nickel tour down there. They really do. If you Whatever you have wrong with you, you guys, you could walk in, stove up, and walk out fine without having to go anywhere else, unless you have the same insurance I do. Uh, but if your insurance pays for whatever that they use over at the SCOE, I mean, everything from the time you walk into your consultation to surgery to, re to rehab, uh, physical therapy, you guys do all that in one building. That's correct. That's a, Seriously, that, it, that's an amazing thing. I mean, not for me, but it will work out for uh, everybody else. That Shamblin guy seems to know what he's doing. So does Hamilton. You guys have some good doctors over there. That's right. And there's a couple of them that I don't even know, but I'm sure they're wonderful doctors. Uh, so there's that. Hop, you got anything you need to do in the uh, traffic or weather division? No, we'll catch it all up at the bottom of the hour. All right. Uh, Dr. Shopler's here. He brought uh, visual aids. And I, w we were uh, just talking about the flexibility of your neck and what it's able to do. Because, see, when I saw this, I thought, oh, my God, somebody call 911. We need to help this person. It's a perfectly normal x-ray. This is how much your neck is supposed to bend. Wow. And this is 
uh, where they put these little devices in there. And you could uh, now, first of all, let's back up a little bit. A herniated disc. That's when you uh, this, it suffers compression or what, and it swells up, and then puts pressure on the n- little bundles of nerves that are around it. That's a good approximation. What happens in the neck is that a little piece of the disc in the neck squirts out. It gets squirted out like a, like a watermelon seed between your fingers, and it goes right up against the nerve that goes down your arm. And depending on which nerve it is, you can usually make the diagnosis in the office because some nerves go to your thumb and some nerves go to your little finger. And on that basis, you can figure out which disc it is. And then the MRI shows you the anatomy. And then if the patient doesn't get better, you can go ahead and fix it with this new product. Okay, so it, when, when you look at this bundle of nerves and stuff that's going from your brain down to your uh, like central nervous system, it's the way I would look at the wires that come out of my home theater. You can tell by what speaker's not working, which wire is not plugged in properly. Correct. So the numbness or whatever it is, well, it's here. You already know how to isolate that based on which part of the neck that particular thing runs through. Usually, yes. See, I did not even know that was a thing. That that is just amazing that you guys are able to map that out. That I just got a uh, Facebook message from a from a gentleman that said he has had um, uh, he has had three um, uh, cervical fusions, two in the past two years, and he was completely unaware of these uh, these artificial discs. Um, So it's not all surgeons have access to this right now. It's been available for about. 10 years in the United States, one of the big problems is that uh, it costs a little more than a fusion. So the insurers have been reluctant to authorize these things for people because it costs a little bit more. The advantage to the patient is they get going much quicker. They don't have uh, transfer stresses to the next levels of their neck, and, uh, and they don't have to wear a collar for as long, so they can go back to work sooner, et cetera. But the insurance companies have been slow to authorize this for for the general population because of the cost. Oh, really? It, 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 is it substantially more? I mean, is it... Uh... It's not substantially more. It's about $1,000 more than what you would pay to have a fusion. But do you find insurance companies tend to balk at that a little bit? I mean... Uh... They have in the past. In fact, uh, Blue Cross wouldn't authorize them altogether, period, end of statement, until just this year. Wow. wow I, I, yeah. I would go out of pocket for that extra grand on that, I think. Now, we, we were talking about this earlier because we put everything in. Uh, er, it's all cookies in football here. Um, it, when you watch two football players, you're a dude, you watch football. When you see two guys crash into each other, and it, when they have that helmet-to-helmet contact and there's that moment of horror, what is the fear of what happened to those guys who were laying there motionless? What is, the, what's the, is, the, is that a, sp- a spinal cord injury that we're worried about? That's obviously what you're worried about. Uh, fortunately... It's amazing how resilient humans are. Sometimes you do get problems that are permanent, but fairly often people will recover from that kind well, of Well, 99 injury. times out of 100, two 200-pound-plus guys going full speed and just jump up and run off the field like it was nothing. It's amazing. It re- it's a, the, uh, the, the way your human, the human body is, the, the resiliency of it is pretty impressive. But what are, is, is, that a, is that like a, just a compression in, injury? In other words, we, we, if your neck is completely straight like as if, and you're crashing into something... Are, that's every one of these these that's getting the same amount of impact at one time. Correct. Does that work in your favor, or would it, is it better to have it off kilter a little bit so it puts, it all, puts all the pressure on one? Well, the most important thing is to be able to brace yourself for the impact. I think that's probably the most important thing to avoid getting hurt on a football field and, sure. of course, proper equipment. And you, but, but you ten, when, you're, when you know you're going to hit somebody, you like tense, and all those muscles are at full tilt, and you're trying, forming a barrier. Helps brace the neck. Right. It's the extremes of movement that are the problem. When you get your neck snapped way back or way forward, that's the problem. Peyton Manning had one of these injuries, had a cervical fusion performed by a friend of mine in Los Angeles. And so he's got a piece of bone in his neck and a plate and a fusion. Wow. Now, because it seems like this might, sometimes the replacement parts that you get are better than the original equipment. Uh, but no, this seems better, like a better design than what came standard equipment. Could you not? I mean, would could you not maybe speculate that a guy like Peyton Manning or somebody has this that is better than before they had the surgery? His his pain in his neck will be gone usually. And, but is it stronger uh, than the it, it, in the event that he takes another shot to the head? Is it less likely to be damaged than the real thing? Where the surgery was is stronger. The problem is the next level up or the next level down gets additional stresses put on it. Yeah. And that's where this artificial disc comes in because by allowing movement at the site of the surgery, you can 
avoid the stress transfer to the next level. Right. It would, and this, this sounds like a ridiculous question, but it's not. Would we ever get to a point in the future where if you are obviously going to be like a gazillionaire quarterback and be like the best <laughs> football player? Of, no. Could you go in and get these installed? You don't even have a problem, but for enough money, you could get a guy to install a full rack of these things in your neck and know you'd be better, stronger, faster. That, that could be coming. Preemptive neck surgery. What will probably happen by that time is that we'll, uh, instead of putting a mechanical device in, we'll be able to synthesize a, a biological disc. Biologics are always better than the than the mechanical synthetic because they don't wear out. Biological are, recovers. Are gotcha. you are you are you using any of the three D technology three D printer technology to, to to conform these to exactly what a patient needs in their neck? Is that is that something you've looked into or maybe a, a using right at this time? Great question. And yes, that's the next horizon is custom made implants. I think we'll see that easily within ten years. Yeah, you can scan the yeah. original part. And type, put it in your 3D printer, and it will make you a better one right there on the spot. Yeah, watching 3D printers, and I think 3D uh, 3D printers uh, in the medical facilities is going to be the the huge thing in the future. Yeah. Future, Especially. it's happening right. There was well, a- I mean, and, and, uh, where were you talking about ten years? Well, it might yeah. be standard practice. I mean, uh, you know, the, to to be able to make artificial parts for people, custom made just for them. I use a lot of spinal implants, and my implants come out of a box, and there's a certain number of millimeters, you know. T- right. 11 millimeters high and 60 millimeters long, eventually you'll have one custom made just for you to fit your exact anatomy. Oh, that's that amazing. is just nothing short of amazing right yeah. there. Well, Doc, uh, come back anytime. You're always welcome here. I, this is fascinating stuff. Bring Dr. Shamblin next time because, uh, you know, I've I'd, I'd got some questions that I don't want to have to pay 30 bucks every time I talk to him about. Uh, maybe we can knock some of that stuff out. Uh, but this is a... Wow, it, we're living in an m- amazing time. And by the way, if you need orthopedic, um, go over to SCOE. Just take a look around over there. If you've got an injury, if it's your knee or your elbow or, God help you, your neck. See, I kind of want to have this done now for my Rice Krispie neck. Now that I, you walk out the same day. See, that now I'm kind of on board with all this. Doc, thanks for uh, coming by. Tell everybody over there, I said, hey, coming up, the ALS uh, ladies here to probably yell at me because I think that ice challenge is dumb. But uh, whatever. Uh, if it does, it, 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 it is doing some good in the world, so there. Uh, so we'll come back and uh, talk about that and what's going on over the ALS. And it, I'm a big fan of keeping your money local on stuff like that, so we'll uh, talk about why you should probably benefit from that. And then Lois Henry will be here to, uh, well, she's got some issues with the Public Utilities Commission this time. Hmm. Wonder what that's got. Well... Uh, You can read the article and then join us back here at 9 o'clock, and she'll walk you through all that. We'll come back and uh, get right back at it. And like I said, Scoey's over there on Bahamas Drive. If you get injured, you know, you're going to have to go to, like, your doctor or whatnot, and they say, where do you want to go? Tell me you want to go see Dr. Shopler. They'll take care of you. And you're you're the neck guy, right? Necks and backs. Necks and backs. They got leg guys, elbow guys, arm guys. They got got staff over there. Tom Bahamas. All right, we'll be right back after these important uh, words and all that stuff. It's uh, First Look with Scott Cox at Bakersfield.com on them internets and the rest of you on broadcast radio here at News Talk 1180 KERN.